Hi, I'm Carcino. Oh, let's talk about it, let's talk about it. No one knows Carcino and none of these. There's so much going on in the world, and I'm just giving my two cents on What is going on? Caitlin Clark, America's darling, one of the best players in the history of women's college basketball. She's breaking all the raking ratings and everything, and they're hoping she's going to rejuvenate the WNBA, which has fallen into an abyss of players that people have just not been interested into watching. So now, the women in the WNBA see her get a contract. That's basically average to the standards, but the fun-loving person that is Caitlin Clark gets a deal with Nike for eight figures. And this just insinuates the female players, and they see her as a whiny, complainy girl on the court, and they mask it with this new persona they want to make of her. They was like, y'all don't know Caitlin Clark. The players that played against her knows, and they say she's arrogant, and she's really full of herself. She knows what she is. She doesn't give a S. She's a baller. She's a hooper. But they think, oh, okay, you've been playing against some old high school people who are not the best in the world. You've never won a championship. Let's see what happens when you go up against us because you have a target on your back. So as much as they laugh and joke and poke fun at her for being who she is as a person, the WNBA players are coming. Those who are what they still are believe that are hanging in too long as uh, Tarasi is like the LeBron James of the WNBA. She doesn't want to leave. And she was looked at as the darling when she came in. Like Sue Bird was looked at. And Sue Bird did great when she played. But they feel this is quite disrespectful for this girl to get this kind of attention when they feel she hasn't done anything yet. She hadn't earned that spot. And if you hadn't earned the spot yet, or you know, you're coming in with all this hype, you should have a little bit more decorum about how you proceed and move around when you talk about sports that people play and have played. They feel insulted the way she's handled this um she kind of goes with the flow and they're changing her image to this good old american girl when everyone sees it as a phony act i think personally in my opinion she's a great basketball player and i think they're gonna find that out once they go up against her on the court they're gonna see she's more than just the hype and the, what they um what they give them i don't see 90% of these people getting away or doing the things that they claim that they want to accomplish or et cetera, whatever it is down the line. You know, you have people who have won WNBA championships who feel that Caitlin um, shouldn't be getting any of this attention whatsoever. And they say, wow, we didn't get this kind of push at all if you had you given us this attention who knows where you know the players would have been and here Dwayne Wade was across the street from us uh one of the kids here went and got his autograph but he was across the street here the day before the draft saying that oh this is going to be special because now he's a part owner of the Chicago Sky and then that day 
they were able to get two of the best uh, players in the draft. As if they're trying to build Chicago up to be that rivals. Well, they've actually done it. Because now Chicago and Indiana are going to play each other a lot. Being that they're in the same division. So you're going to get a lot of matchups now. Which shocked a lot of people that Angel Reese was not drafted higher. Because now that she wasn't. And she's in the same like division with... Uh, with Caitlin Clark, this competition of battle between Indiana and Chicago for the for the title and moving in, this is going to be a quite of a tug of war as Indiana try to get the pieces around there to help Caitlin Clark when she comes into the league playing for the Indiana Fever. Well, situations always um, turn for the worse. They turn for the better and then they turn for the worse. Um, instead of looking at it, which I think they should do, use this as an opportunity to say, okay, everybody's, the world's going to be watching when Caitlin Clark plays. So we could put on our show there, and that's what some of the girls are planning to do. Instead of trying to embarrass Caitlin Clark, use that as a moment to showcase your skills so they can say, wow, this girl's just as good as Caitlin Clark. And there are some girls on the South Carolina team that were very uh, felt unappreciated. Uh, they did a defensive job on on her, they felt that they forced her to make turnovers and the South Carolina guard didn't get any attention for the job she did on Caitlin Clark defensively, getting like two steals on her um, by herself. And Caitlin went and complained to the refs, but the steals were clean. And she got no attention. So when you see situations like that materialize and you see that they're going to target her and come after her on the court. You only got to say to yourself, what is this really about? This is about competition. This is about money. You got to realize these players have played an entire career for this league that has underpaid them, in their opinion. And they feel they should have been paid more money. And now that they see the women's basketball gets seen and people go out to those games when it's universities and, and NCAA, why they don't do it for the pros? Well, most of those people are in those universities or that's their alma mater and they know how to promote their game better. They don't get stuck in politics. They focus on basketball or the sport itself. And that's part of the problem. Now, what we've noticed over the times, over the years, is that there's been a, a, a very small detail window that would showcase everybody's production levels, skill sets, all of these things that's supposed to shine on a main stage or a grandstand appearance. When you don't start seeing those things materialize, you start realizing there's a bigger problem on the horizon than you could ever imagine.
Now, I've seen a lot of things go in a direction that didn't make a lot of sense. I've seen things turn for the worse. But what I haven't seen is anybody prove that they're standout. That they're a standout player and, the, you know, put the focus in. I haven't seen Caitlin Clark type of play since, like, Cynthia Cooper with that type of impact on the game. So unless you were really putting that type of effort into the performances that you're putting out there on the floor, it's very hard for someone to take that stuff seriously. Because actually, if you look at it in totality, these things are, are coming through at a rate that is humiliating for some to see it's been extremely humiliating for some people to see or understand what it's like or what it is to be at that level to compete at that level to move around at that level they just don't get it When you see people that perform normally in a controlled setting or environment, you start seeing them move in a, in a direction that makes sense. When you start seeing people move in a direction that don't make any sense, now you have to start asking why. And instead of focusing on your team to get better to win, you're focusing on one player that plays on another team and you want to go in and beat that one person. Then what about your next game? You're getting up for that game, but the other games you're losing in. You know, so a lot of people fall into the category of being carried into a situation that they don't feel that is ideal. We get it. You're not going to like the situations. But the WNBA is like, look, we're not really making the money that we say we're making. We can't tell you that while y'all are begging for more money. We're inflating the budget, okay? Saying we're making these this type of money, but we're really not, okay? It's embarrassing to say the money we're really making. And overall, we're really taking kind of a loss. Nobody's really tuning in to watch you. We're not really spending our budget money in marketing you. So understand sponsors are small. That's why we have to move you into other areas to play. Because you we can't afford to have you play at like Madison Square Garden. No, you got to go play at a gymnasium. It costs a lot of money for these lights. And put all this on just to have minimum crowds. So we're already cutting cost. Now, unless you really love it, this wouldn't be ideal for you. There's a lot of players in the WNBA that I've said I've made more money than per year and it's true and it's like almost embarrassing that some people were like I got to get another job and play in the WNBA that's kind of crazy they had a side job and was playing in the WNBA one player for the WNBA made 34,000 their first year 34,000. The second year was a slight bump to like 36. Then it went to like 39. And then it was like 42 after um, the fourth year. It was like 42,000. And that was still low. I don't say that to brag about like how much money I make. I'll make this kind of money. 
It's not about that at all. This is a this is a shame for the women involved here. See, the women involved here have a um, um, fiduciary's duty to know how much the league is earning, especially if they have profit sharing. If you have a profit sharing, which I don't know if they do, you have to know what the company is making. You have a right to know. You need that information. And it should be provided to you. Now, because most of these people that you see every day are limited in what they can do and say, they're stuck out here. I don't know what to tell people. All I can tell you is it's sad for Caitlin Clark to a degree because she's going to be targeted, but this is going to happen when they put you on that pedestal. But she's a hooper, for real, and they're going to find that out. Like, she's not the prima donna type at all. They're America and the media and the hype. They're trying to make her America's darling. She's not like, she knows what she is. She's a hooper. She's going to talk shit and do what she do on the court. That's what she do. She's not some conservative girl who's doing this and that. She, people are trying to use all these women athletes about a sport they don't care about. That's the thing that kills me. From the people that don't care about basketball or sports in general are trying to use people as their catalyst for their own political agenda. It's disgusting. So... Oh, yes, yeah, it's, it's typical. You see it all the time. I mean, Dana Tarasi trying to prove a point now and she's at the end of the latter part of her career, that's embarrassing. She should really embrace the girl. It would highlight her or she's in the twilight of her career. But no, she's the defiant, still, still angry playing Tarasi. She's always been that. And that's just how she is. She just wasn't the lovable character. <laughs> she was always villainous. So we'll see how it goes. You know, she might have a, a learning curve. You know, she's going to be playing with top talent in the league and they're going to be pushing her to try to do the things that she did when she was in college. And the NBA is definitely going to make sure they help her out in any way, shape, or form. Because the WNBA knows one thing. This is a lightning rod. People are going to come see her games. We got her in Indiana. They're going to want to come see her. People from Iowa can travel to see her. It's not that long of a commute. It's perfect. It was either there or Chicago, but she was going to be near the Midwest so that they can come over and see their girl. So Indiana's very close to Iowa, and the rest is history. They're actually putting a new stadium up that they're going to play at, and they renovate so they can get more seats. They already know. With ticket requests, they're going to be through the roof. So, on that note, I'm going to let everybody go. Shouts out to Kwame Brown, Bus Life. And welcome to HDI TV and Ticket TV, The Dreamers Pro, Star Report. Jag Sports with Jose Rodriguez. And don't forget to join the Patreon, the Carcino for Life Patreon. We got a lot of stuff in the pop out, like popcorn. 
Like, so don't think we haven't been working. We've been working. There's just been a lot of stuff happening live. So we had to cover that and we still kept you updated. So we up, but that ain't even the iceberg that's going to hit. So just be ready. It's coming.